Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church in our virtual worship series. This video is for Sunday, May 30th, 2021, which is the Sunday of the Holy Trinity. Thank you for joining us this morning for our short worship service and appreciate the fact that you're tuning in and hope that you're staying safe and healthy wherever you are. And just so you know, if you were to come to church now with the new CDC guidelines having changed a little bit over the past couple of weeks, we have developed some new procedures and policies and we're allowing people to come in and sit in certain sections of the church, mask free if they're fully vaccinated and masks on if they want to, if they prefer to be socially distanced still. So it's very interesting all the changes that are happening. Uh, so come on in and, and check it out whenever you feel that it's safe. In the meantime, Let's prepare our hearts and minds before God as we get ready to worship. So now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three, Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is from the Gospel of John, beginning in the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. And Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh of flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Don't be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered him, You are a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So here we are, Trinity Sunday. And of course, we're, we are Trinitarians. We all say it, we all know it, but we hardly ever even talk about it, really. In fact, a lot of people I speak to don't even know exactly what it means. And others wonder why there's debate about it and how some Christians aren't Trinitarians or never have been Trinitarians. Um, then again, when you think about it, the whole notion of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit being all part of the same thing of one substance, as we say, well, it's, it, it's not concrete, it's not specific, and <laughs> it's not really defined very carefully in, in Scripture either. Um, Jesus does say, the Father and I are one, and if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, and things like that. But he also says he'll send the Holy Spirit, which he never really specifically says is part of his own self, from his own words. On the other hand, Jesus does tell the disciples to go out and baptize people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So 
it's difficult to figure it all out sometimes, especially the Holy Spirit part, because the Holy Spirit doesn't ever speak directly in Scripture, and there's no reported sightings. So um, it often doesn't seem to make sense. And uh, I've been saying that a lot lately in, in over here at St. John's. We've been talking about all these things in Scripture that that sometimes don't add up to the intellectual mind. Um, so at the end of the day, uh, we just have to trust. We have to have faith. We have to, as we love to say in, in, in the Lutheran Church, live in the mystery. <laughs> but sometimes that just sounds like a stock excuse, doesn't it? You know, live in the mystery. I mean, <laughs> look, we like to have things defined. Wait, let me rephrase that. We, we need to have things defined. I mean, think about it. The newest catchword everywhere you go uh, is metrics, right? In baseball, all you hear about from the commentators are the metrics. You know, coaches barely trust their own instincts anymore because they have the metrics to look at. And it happens across the board in life, you know? Like, I, I've even caught myself looking out, seeing rain out the window, looking out the window, seeing it's raining, and then I check my weather app to see if that's right. I mean, look, be honest, right? Haven't you ever done that? When the weatherman says it's going to rain at, at 2, don't you kind of check your watch? <laughs> you know, it's It may be silly, but it's the culture that we live in. We like and we need definition, predictability, concreteness, tangible, repeatable, evidence-based proof. That's one of the problems we're having with this whole pandemic because so much of it is nebulous, especially coming out of it, you know? So yeah, we want evidence-based proof. But the problem is the Holy Trinity is the opposite of that. You know, this whole gospel text is the, the opposite of that. Hey, look at Nicodemus. You gotta feel bad for this guy. He's positively flummoxed at the end of his secret evening conversation in this section of John. You know, he came to Jesus wanting to know exactly what to do and how and when to do it. He wanted a heavenly metric. But Jesus says, hey, Nicodemus, there, there's, there's no app for that. In fact, Jesus says even he doesn't know how, when, or where the Spirit will work. He says it's like the wind, you know? So if he doesn't predict the work of the Holy Spirit, I'm not quite sure why we want to spend so much time and energy trying to define, predict, and control the work of the Holy Spirit in our midst. But the question is maybe, where are you in your life on this particular day? You know, I'm sure we're all feeling a lot of things right now, wondering what's going to happen next. You know, especially now, it's, it's now that you, you want, need, and deserve some kind of clarity, some definition, some answers, you know? Um, <laughs> I was just in, in, in a store this morning where some people had their masks on, some people had their masks off, and you have to ask and figure it out, and everything's very, very unclear right now. And so, you know, if you're listening from First Lutheran right now, uh, for you guys, it's just a week before you reopen for live worship after 16 months of confusion and transition and frustration and waiting. And for us here at St. John's, we've turned everything inside out all over again with all the complications of mask and no mask right here in the same worship service. So if you ever were going to feel like Nicodemus, right now is the time. You know, the past year has been hard, but exiting this pandemic is going to be harder than it was to enter it. If there ever were an uneasy, confusing, mysterious, transitional time, it's, it's right now. Then again, that's exactly why Jesus came. And that's exactly why he said last week that he would in fact send the advocate who would intercede on your behalf. And that's exactly why Jesus is telling Nicodemus on this night and us to trust in that advocate, to trust in the Holy Spirit, to be born of the Spirit, which is to be infused by the Spirit 
and trusting of it, um, waiting for it, and, and living in it. But you know, not for nothing, if none of this makes sense to you, at least take comfort in, in this fact. It, even Jesus was not worried about the unpredictability of the future. Because he knew this. He knew that the Spirit would arrive. He knows the promises will be kept. There will be rebirth. And the mission of Christ in the world will be accomplished. Even it's not, if it's not um, how or when or where or why we think. Now, maybe it took a while for Nicodemus, but eventually over the next two years or so, he got used to the idea that he too had to live in that mystery. And at the end of the day, he, he played a very important role at the end of Jesus' earthly life. So this may be a really difficult period for you, for all of us, whatever it is that's going going on, but particularly with this, this whole pandemic that we've been immersed in for this year, this is really a pinnacle moment of faith. This is a pinnacle moment to trust in God's workings in our lives and in our congregations. It's a moment to surrender to the unknown and live in that mystery. But more importantly, this is a moment to remember your core mission, which is to give thanks to God for the empty cross, to wait for the wind of the Spirit to work whenever and however God needs it to. And in the meantime, to continue to be sent to meet the needs of the people around you, all while trusting in, in the mystery of this beyond comprehension, three-in-one God who loves you, cares for you, and advocates for you. So that even now, in the most confusing and weird, mysterious times, you too can sense the peace that passes all understanding, which will in turn allow you to simply say, Here I am, Lord. Send me. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Take a moment to share the peace with those of you together watching in the room, uh, people in your household, people outside. Um, make a call. Send a text. Let somebody know that the Holy Spirit is resting upon their shoulders too and that they can live in the mystery of the moment because God has it under control. And now, gathered into one by that Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon each one of you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. And remember, you are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us this morning for our virtual worship. And we hope to see you either in church or on video next week. God bless you all.